Jessica Damasa at HIC 2017, and I'm reporting from the Heises studio. I'm here with Kanav. Can you please introduce yourself? I am Kanav Kahol. I am the Chief Technology Officer at Pink Riksha Design based in Delhi, India. Okay, and so tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing in India as it relates to digital health. Uh, we've been working a lot with rural communities and how do you actually use informatics to empower the rural communities. The uniqueness with this is that uh, you don't actually have the genetic resources that are available, for example, available bandwidth servers, but that's also an opportunity for us. And what we actually take is a very community-centered and people-centered approach to developing technology where people are at the front and center and how will they consume all this information. And informatics becomes a very important way for them to actually bridge whatever they're missing in life. So if you don't have roads, connectivity can actually still get you a doctor. If you don't have access to medications, connectivity can actually get you all those things coming through you. So how do you actually really engineer that within a resource poor environment is the work that we are focused on. So tell me a little bit about, about how you're actually doing that. So you said that it's a great opportunity, that there's yeah. such difficulty with connectivity. So how are you augmenting digital connectivity with human connectivity to bridge that gap? So I think, uh, you know, you put it really well. But the fact is that the human connectivity needs to be enhanced and augmented by the digital community uh, connectivity. And that's what we're actually doing. We're looking at these structures that actually exist within the community. Things called self-help groups where women get together, they pull in their money, they discuss various topics. How do we actually bring in healthcare into their topics? So we've been using a bunch of Internet of Things technologies. We've been using a bunch of very cool cloud computing uh, paradigms as well as mobile phone apps to essentially bring all of this together where people can come in and discuss about pregnancy, people can come in and discuss about uh, newborn health, people can come in and discuss about the advantages of having iron in your diet and then you actually use Internet of Things to essentially enhance that behavior. So we've developed this little uh, carpet, a carpet which actually has all these sensors built into it. Women sit around the carpet and as they're sitting and discussing healthcare, the system can actually pick up what were the topics being discussed, uh, whether they actually discussed all the topics, who was speaking, who wasn't speaking, how do we get people who are not speaking to actually participate in the discussion and what kind of health impacts would things like this have? Um, the results have been absolutely encouraging for us. Uh, we've also been looking at how do you combine digital media with physical media to give better health communication mm -hmm. or for that matter, you know, also looking at how do you guide a meeting so people are always talking about the right things. Uh, for us, it's always about enhancing the community. Uh, not just an individual, but actually empowering the entire community around with information. And informatics has a spectacular role to play. And, and one of the more interesting aspects is informatics has always been about an individual and the relation of the individual with the healthcare system. But I think the discussion is now expanding to not just an individual and its relation with the healthcare system, but the community and its relation with the healthcare system. So that's fascinating, something that hasn't been done before, and we're very excited about Certainly. it. Certainly, and I think, I mean, it's interesting what the things that you said was that these women pool their money as well. So I'm interested, how are you integrating not only like health into this conversation, but it sounds like finances as well. Talk yeah. a little bit about this multidisciplinary approach you're taking. Uh, the fact of the matter is that we are not just a product of our healthcare system, but health is a product of various social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. Your socioeconomic status influences you, uh, what you actually eat influences you, how you grow it influences you. So the fact is that for these women, healthcare is not just something that is separate, but it's actually a part of this entire continuum of daily life. So the idea was very simple. Let us actually talk about healthcare in the context of being in daily life. And the advantage there is health should not be episodic. We only think about health when we are sick. Right. But what these women are actually doing is starting to think about healthcare on a daily basis. And that, I think, is a beautiful paradigm for us to actually talk about preventive health and to actually talk about a sustainable healthcare system. So speaking of that sustainable healthcare system, when we start to talk about big established healthcare systems, like here in Australia or in the United States or in Europe, not rural health necessarily, what can we learn from these rural health communities? What can we take away from them and implement into these bigger health institutions, the bigger care delivery systems? I think the concept of creating communities is something that can come in here. So we've had communities, you know, people who are survivors of prostate cancer or people who know about prostate cancer or any one of these disease groups. How does informatics actually 
inform them. That's something that hasn't been explored, but it needs to be because these patient groups have become central to how we actually deliver healthcare, and they're a very big part of prevention, very big part of giving messages, very big part of also interventions. So I think that's a direct linkage. The other part is, as you talk about smart health, you also talk about smart homes. So we actually just debuted a device at the HESA, which is a smart mirror, a mirror that actually gives you access to various pieces of information as you see yourself in the morning, which includes your, which actually includes your, uh, you know, the medicines you're supposed to take for the day, or how you're comparing with your cohort group, or your comparing gr a comparison group in terms of how many steps you've walked. You know, these are the kind of things where we actually give information access to individuals beyond just the conventional methods of a hospital. And I think that's going to be something that the established healthcare systems will actually learn, and we all we've already seen that in talks that there is a huge market and an appetite for things like that. Okay, last question for you. So, what's your best advice then, given 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 the projects that you've been working on, um, both with the Smart Mirror and with these communities and the rural health connectivity in India, what's your best advice for the digital health community or the health informatics community here in Australia in terms of, of helping move the, the entire industry forward? I think what the informatics community needs to realize is that you guys are ensuring basic human rights to individuals. The right, the right to information will become the biggest right, I think that will drive humanity forward. And informatics is key in order to ensure that the information that people are getting is usable, is something that they can act upon. So there is a responsibility that comes with this, you know, with being an informatician that I hope everybody realizes, but also the great opportunity that you actually have. The opportunity of the fact that information is going to be the currency of the future and health informatics will essentially allow people like you and I to essentially benefit from this information and to build a better world. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us at HIC 2017. Oh, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thanks.